The Unwinnable War by Gantz and John Welsh You can run, but you cannot hide, though you desperately search far and wide for freedom and sanctuary, but there is no place or time in samsara that is free from the fear and fact of death that can strike without warning before your next breath. Our treacherous leaders who at best are misled by evil puppet masters have unleashed demonic forces of chaos, violence and destruction, leading to death, disasters and devastation on a worldwide scale, causing unnecessary tears and travail. Why do we aid and abet our deadliest foes by adding to our manifold miseries and woes? Time is rapidly running out. We face imminent catastrophic defeat and rout. The candle flame of freedom flickers and dies extinguished by the hurricane force gales of intolerance, ignorance, stupidity and lies against which reason, truth and justice vainly rails. Terror stalks the defenseless in the ever-increasing darkness where the innocent are imprisoned and the masses of destructive, indoctrinated fools controlled by evil, demonic, rich rogues and their rules run rampant, free from penalties, punishments or restrictions causing gratuitous mayhem, murder and devastation. Yet so few seem to recognize and see the truth or realize that there is no way that anyone can free themselves from all this misery without Amida's primal vow. Let us decide now, without hesitation or procrastination, to abandon our impotent self-power and embrace Amida's invincible other power. Namo Amida Butsu! Namo Amida Butsu! Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you, Amida Buddha. Homage to Amida Buddha. I take refuge in Amida Buddha. The above verses were inspired by the following passages on pages 496 to 509 of the excellent and very important book by Reverend Joshua Adrian Celia, Commentary on the Sutra on the Buddha of Infinite Life. Arya Nagarjuna also explained the difference between the two ways of entering this stage. Quote, there are two paths by which bodhisattvas reach the stage of non-retrogression. The path of difficult practice is a way of trying to reach the stage of non-retrogression in the period of the five defilements, when no Buddha dwells in the world. It is difficult to follow this path. The path of difficult practice is, therefore, like an overland journey, painstakingly made on foot. The path of easy practice is followed by aspiring to be born in the pure land through faith in Amida Buddha, and attaining birth in his pure land by the power of his vows. The path of easy practice is, therefore, like a pleasant journey on water. End quote. As we have seen in the first passage of section 47, and in the quote from Nagarjuna, it is faith in Amida, and not personal achievements, which is the cause of entering the stage of non-retrogression on the path of easy practice. Quote, if there are people who hear the name of that Buddha, Rejoice so greatly as to dance, and think of him even once, then you should know that they have gained great benefit by receiving unsurpassed virtue. End quote. To hear the name is not an ordinary hearing without any consequences, but a hearing with faith. Shinran Shonen explained this in many of his writings. Quote, hearing the inconceivable selected primal vow, and the holy name of supreme wisdom without a single doubt, is called true and real Shinjin or faith. It is also called the diamond-like mind. When sentient beings realize this Shinjin, they attain the equal of perfect enlightenment and will ultimately attain the supreme enlightenment, being of the same stage as Maitreya, the future Buddha. That is, they become established in the stage of the truly settled. Hence, Shinjin is like a diamond, never breaking or degenerating, or becoming fragmented. Thus, we speak of diamond-like Shinjin. Quote, end quote. Hear the name is to hear the name that embodies the primal vow. Hear means to hear the primal vow and be free of doubt. Further, it indicates Shinjin or faith. Shinjin or faith is hearing the vow of the Tathagata and being free of doubt. Entrusting is to be free of doubt, believing deeply and without any double-mindedness that the Tathagata's primal vow is true and real. End quote. To hear about the message of Imida's primal vow, we're saying of his name and faith, is mentioned, quote, if you entrust yourself to me, say my name, and wish to be born in my land, you will indeed be born there, end quote. 
and to trust in his promise means to have faith in him or hear his name and faith. To think on him even once is equal to saying his name even once and is referring to Amida's assurance that there is no set number of times one must say Nembutsu or think of him. Rejoice so greatly as to dance does not actually mean that a person of faith always jumps in the air and feels great happiness in every minute of his everyday life, but that he knows the burden of attaining perfect enlightenment and freedom from birth and death has been taken off his shoulders by a meter. Anybody who carries a great burden is happy when that burden is taken away from him, so you can be happy or feel relief when you first entrust to a meter. Buddha, if attaining Buddhahood or final liberation from birth and death is the most important matter for you. However, this does not mean that from hour to hour, minute to minute, second to second, you will think about a meter or feel a continuous joy so as to jump in the air. Our lives are in such a way that we can always be overwhelmed by daily problems and worries. The joy of faith is not worldly happiness but rather a spiritual relief of knowing that no matter what happens in our lives, you're assured of birth in the Pure Land, and that this is your last life as a samsaric being. As Shinran said, joy or kangi means to rejoice beforehand at being assured of attaining what one shall attain. Renya also said, quote, When faith is settled, we rejoice, knowing that birth in the Pure Land is assured. End quote. Even if our everyday sorrows, difficulties and attachments cover the sky of faith, we know deep inside that we are assured of Amida's salvation and that the suffering of samsara will not last long for us anymore. As Shinran said, quote, The clouds and mists of greed, desire, anger and enmity continually cover the sky of true faith. Yet, just as the sunlight is obstructed by clouds or mists, below them it is light and there is no darkness. End quote. The light behind the clouds is knowing and being glad that our time in the samsaric prison will soon be over. Also, to hear the name is the same as to hear the sutra, as both are done on the basis of joyful faith or the faith mind who knows that this is one's last life as a prisoner in samsara. This sutra is Shakyamuni's teaching on Amida Buddha as expressed in the larger sutra. His exhorting us to listen to and accept this teaching and sutra in faith is overwhelming. Even if a great fire were to fill the universe of a thousand million worlds, you should pass through it to hear this sutra, to arouse joyful faith, to uphold and chant it, and to practice in accordance with its teachings. End quote. Those who hear this sutra and the name of Amida, that is, they entrust to Shakyamuni's teaching on Amida Buddha and come to be in accord with his primal vow, which is the essence of the sutra, thus saying Amida's name and faith even once, will gain great benefit by receiving unsurpassed virtue. The great benefit is entering the stage of non-retrogression for the attainment of Nirvana in the Pure Land. The unsurpassed virtue is Amida's transference of merits to them, which actually makes possible the entering into this stage in the present life and birth into the Pure Land after death. Shinran also said, quote, Those who, hearing Amida's Buddha's name, rejoice in it with reverence and praise, receive its treasures of virtues, the great benefit acquired with one utterance is supreme. When sentient beings of this evil world of the five defilements entrust themselves to select a primal vow, virtues indescribable, inexplicable and inconceivable fill those practitioners. End quote. Right after urging us to hear this sutra, to arouse joyful faith, to uphold and chant it, and to practice in accordance with its teachings, Shakyamuni mentions that there are Mahayana followers, that is, Bodhisattvas in aspiration, who are unable to have this faith, or to hear it with faith. Quote, there are many Bodhisattvas who wish to hear this teaching, but are still unable to do so. End quote. However, those who have faith in his teaching about Amida Buddha as expressed in the larger sutra, those who hear the teaching with faith, are assured of entering the stage of non-retrogression, for the attainment of the highest perfect enlightenment in the Pure Land. Quote, if there are sentient beings who have heard it, they will attain the stage of non-retrogression for realizing the highest enlightenment. This is why you should single-heartedly accept in faith, uphold and chant this sutra, and practice in accordance with its teachings. End quote. Insisting further on the importance of not having any doubt about the contents of this sutra, Shakyamuni said, quote, The Buddha further said, 
I've expounded this teaching for the sake of sentient beings and enabled you to see Amitaus or Amida and all in his land. Strive to do what you should. After I've passed into Nirvana, do not allow doubt to arise. End quote. The first sentence shows the universal goal of this sutra, which is to help sentient beings everywhere and in any circumstance without any discrimination regarding their personal capacities to attain freedom from birth and death. In order to do this, he enabled the audience on Vulture Peak, where the sutra was taught, to see Amida and his pure land. Why did he do that? Because he wanted them to act as witnesses to future generations for the real existence of Amida and his pure land. If Amida and his pure land were just symbols and metaphors for more subtle teachings, he would not make this effort of showing them to the audience. However, this vision or revelation of Amida and his pure land plays a crucial role in the teaching of this sutra, together with the story of Dhammakara becoming Buddha Amida. The detailed description of the enlightened qualities of the land and its inhabitants, etc. Nothing is by chance in the larger sutra, and all its elements have the intention of helping us to accept in faith the salvation offered by Amida in his primal vow. Because Amida is real, we can have faith in him and say his name. Because his pure land is also real and filled with so many enlightened manifestations, we can aspire to be born there after death. So great is the importance of Amida Dharma and the larger sutra that Shakyamuni promised to keep it in the world even after all the other sutras would disappear. Quote, in the future, the Buddhist scriptures and teachings will perish, but out of pity and compassion, I will especially preserve this sutra and maintain it in the world for a hundred years more. Those beings who encounter it will attain deliverance in accord with their aspirations. End quote. Shinran commented on this. Quote, in the future, the sutras will all disappear. The largest sutra alone is designed to remain a hundred years thereafter. How can one vacillate in doubt over the great vow expounded in this sutra? Simply entrust yourself to Shakyamuni's true words. End quote. How can one dare to say this sutra does not contain the true teaching on Amida Buddha when Shakyamuni himself said that even if the universe is on fire, we should, by all means, accept it in faith and that he will keep it in the world even more than other sutras? When all the masters of our lineage accepted it, how can we do otherwise? However, Shakyamuni foresaw the inner difficulties of accepting this sutra. Quote, the Buddha said to Maitreya, It is difficult to encounter and behold a Tathagata or Buddha when he is in this world. Difficult to access, difficult to hear are the Buddha's teachings and scriptures. It is also difficult to hear the excellent teachings of Bodhisattvas, the Paramitas. Difficult too is it to meet a good teacher, to hear the Dharma and perform the practices. But most difficult of all difficulties is to hear the Sutra, have faith in it with joy, and hold fast to it. Nothing is more difficult than this. End quote. To be born in human form is difficult. To meet a Buddha in flesh and bones is difficult. To come in contact with Shakyamuni's teachings, even in our age, is also difficult, as there are many places on this planet where there are no Buddhist temples, or if they exist, many are corrupted by wrong views. To understand and practice the moral teachings of the Mahayana, that is, the six parameters, the Bodhisattva precepts, etc., as well as the various Dharma gates of self-power, is also difficult. And to meet true teachers of any lineage is rare in our world filled with charlatans. But most difficult is to hear and entrust to the teaching of the larger sutra, that is, Amida Dharma. Have faith in Amida without clinging to one's so-called power. Say his name exclusively and wish to be born in his pure land. The pure land is easy to go to because it is attainable through Amida's power, but few actually go there as most of the Buddhist followers cling to their own power. Shakyamuni himself said in section 31 of the Sutra that, quote, the pure land is easy to reach, but very few actually go there, end quote. Commenting on this, Master Renya also said, quote, the pure land, how easily we go there. Hence the larger sutra teaching teaches, going is easy, and yet no one is born there. This passage means that when we realize the settled mind or faith and rely steadfastly on a meter, it is easy to go to the pure land. But because those who receive faith are rare, although it is easy to go to the pure land, very few are born there. End quote. Shinran Shonen said, quote, 
the great sage Shakyamuni teaches that Amida's land is easy to reach and calls the sentient beings who doubts the pure land path a person lacking eyes or lacking ears. End quote. Master Shantao said, quote, To be able to hear the rare Dharma is among the most difficult. To accept it in faith and teach others to believe in it is the difficulty among all the difficulties. End quote. It is extremely important to understand that Amida Dharma is what Shakyamuni expounded and taught. This is why he said at the end of the larger sutra, Thus have I formed my Dharma. Thus have I expounded my Dharma. Thus have I taught my Dharma. End quote. It means, dear disciples, do not let yourself be drawn into confusion. This is the Dharma you should accept in the exact way I myself formed it and expounded it. This is also evident from the next sentence. Quote, you must receive it and practice it by the method prescribed. End quote. Attention, dear readers. Shakyamuni said we must receive it and practice it in the way it was taught, not to change it like we are some kind of owners of the Dharma or enlightened beings ourselves. So please, do not approach the Amida Dharma with a possessive mind, but with the humbleness of receiving the most precious medicine. Namo Amida Butsu. <laughs>